Hey folks, welcome to the seventh and final video in a series of seven videos where we look at the derivations that you need to know for the advanced higher physics exam. In this video, we look at how to derive an expression for a refractive index in terms of Brewster's angle, and this is from the waves topic. So let's get going. Just like the derivation for lens coating thickness, which we saw in the previous video of this series, we're going to make use of a diagram to help us derive an expression for refractive index in terms of Brewster's angle from the polarization section of the waves topic. So we're trying to derive this equation here, n equals tan ip, where n is refractive index and ip is Brewster's angle. So if you look here, it says that unpolarized light, such as sunlight, can be reflected from the surface of water as shown below. So here we have air and then water, and that's our air-water boundary. And then we have a ray of unpolarized light, which is being both reflected from the water surface and transmitted through the water surface. So we have some reflection and some refraction going on. And remember the definition of Brewster's angle is the angle of instance which causes the reflected light to be fully plane polarized. Or another way we can define it is in terms of the angle between the reflected and the refracted rays. So we can say that when the reflected ray, which is fully plane polarized, and the refracted ray, which is partially plane polarized, have an angle of 90 degrees between them, then our angle of instance is called Brewster's angle. And it's given the symbol I little p. Now you can see that the angle of instance here is the same as this angle here, the angle of reflection, and that's because this ray is undergoing the law of reflection, which says that the angle of instance must be equal to the angle of reflection when you've got light being reflected off a surface. So if this is IP, the angle of instance here, then that angle there must also be IP. And we're saying that when the reflected light is fully plane polarized, then the reflected ray makes an angle of 90 degrees to the refracted ray. And because this is the refracted ray, this is going to be my angle of refraction little r in here, which is inside the water. So what do we do with this diagram? Well, remember back to higher physics where we saw an expression for the refractive index of a material, which is given by n equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2, where theta 1 is the angle between the instant ray and the normal, always taken to be the angle in air, whilst theta 2 is the angle between the refracted ray and the normal, which is always taken to be the angle in the medium. So if we think about it here, we've got n equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2, where theta 1 is always going to be the angle in air, which is our angle of incidence, so that's going to be the angle IP here between the instant ray and the normal, and then our angle theta 2 here is going to be the angle of refraction, which is here between the normal and the refracted ray. So using the diagram and the equation above here, we can write that n is equal to sine of ip divided by sine of r. And remember, that's because we're saying that theta 1 is equal to ip here, the angle in air, and theta 2, the angle in the denser medium, which is water in this case, is little r. So we've got n equals sine ip over sine r. But from the diagram, let's have a look at little r. Now, we can rewrite little r in terms of the angles on this right-hand side. So remember, in this quadrant, we've got 90 degrees, and then we've got another 90-degree quadrant here. So to go from the normal at this side all the way around to the normal at this side, we've got 180 degrees, i.e. half a circle. So if all of these angles need to add up to 180 degrees, ip plus 90 degrees plus r must equal 180 degrees. So we can find this unknown angle r by saying 180 degrees minus ip minus the 90 degrees will give me r left over. And that's what we're doing here. r is equal to 180 minus ip minus 90, but you can hopefully see that 180 minus 90 will just give you 90, so that gives me 90 minus ip here. So that means we can substitute in for r in this expression here. So we have n equals sine ip divided by sine of 90 minus ip. But remember from maths that sine of 90 minus x equals cos x, so we can rewrite sine of 90 minus ip equals cos ip. So that means we can rewrite this as n equals sine ip over cos ip. IP. And again from maths, you should know that tan x is equal to sin x over cos x. So we can say that sin ip over cos ip is equal to tan ip. So we can therefore write n is equal to tan ip, where we've now got our final equation for refractive index n in terms of Brewster's angle ip. So just to quickly recap, we're thinking about unpolarized light being reflected from the surface of water, and we're saying that some of that light will be transmitted through the water as well. And we're thinking about Brewster's angle, which is the angle of instance which causes the reflected ray and the refracted ray to be at 90 degrees to each other. And we then start with the expression for refractive index from higher physics, which is n equals sin theta 1 over sin theta 2, where theta 1 is measured in air, and theta 2 is measured in the denser medium. So we can rewrite that in terms of our angles from the diagram, n equals sin ip over over sine r, and we can then rewrite an expression for little r, the angle of refraction, which is 180 minus ip minus 90, or simplified, gives us 90 minus ip. So we can then substitute in for little r in this expression to get n equals sine ip over sine 90 minus ip, 
which we can rewrite as n equals sine ip over cos ip. And we can then use our math knowledge to simplify that to n equals tan ip. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.